we have Steve, George, Kayla. Oh, you took care, right? Is that right? No, that's none of your names. Um, why do we have names? To get called by? Yeah. To identify each other. Just imagine if there was no names and you were at school and you went to see out in the playground and say, hey, you come here. And like 10 people walked over and say, no, no, I wanted just this person. But if you said, hey, Sarah, come here, then they didn't know who you're talking about, right? That's why um, we were given names. In the Bible, put back, Adam and Eve, were, that was their names, and they named all their sons, and the names just carried on. So we can identify each other. But you know what? As the world got more populated and towns and, and cities got bigger, they would do things like this. They would say, Jesse of Wilbur, or Allison of Somerset, or they would say, uh, Jacob, son of Jesse, or Kyle, son of Seth. That's what they would do uh, to identify. And I was looking back, it said, uh, in the 11th century, which was about 900 years ago, when they issued the last names, because it was getting confusing. Um, you know, they ran out of names, but the people kept increasing, so they gave last names. And the way last names were decided is usually what your dad or your grandfather did for a living. If he was a blacksmith, which made stuff out of steel, like horseshoes and, and metal, or they heat steel and bend it, uh, if he was a blacksmith, your name was given Smith. If he was one that sewed clothes or altered clothes, was a tailor, your last name was Taylor. My name, in a different language, means storekeeper. So that's how our last names were issued, usually by what the occupation of your parent or grandparent was. So that's how they gave last names. But it wasn't until the 1860s, unfortunately, 1861 to 65, we had American Civil War. And there was over 600,000 Americans killed. And many of them from different states had the same first name and last name. Um, so they started going middle names after it almost became mandatory middle initial or middle name after the American Civil War. So now it's harder to find somebody with you have the same first name, same middle name, and same last name. So that's a little bit about names and history. Um, I'm going to talk about a woman in the Bible. Her name was Hannah. What's Hannah spelled backwards? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay, so um, her name was Hannah. And she wanted a child really bad. She couldn't have children. Her and her husband couldn't have kids. And she really, she wanted to be a mother really bad. And she was, this was her at the tabernacle. The tabernacle was like a church at that time. And this was a priest, Eli. And she prayed hard, really hard, because she wanted a, a children. She wanted a son. And her prayer was, God, if you give me a son, I will dedicate his life to you. Eli blessed her, he heard her pray, he blessed her, and then God heard her prayers and left her become pregnant. And she had a son. Does anybody know him his son's name? Samuel? Okay, that's what she named her son Samuel. And you know what? God left her become pregnant, and that's what she prayed for. And what was her, um, what she say she would do if, if she had a baby, son? Yes, and whenever he was around four years old, this is her dedicating, this was Eli the priest at the tabernacle. She took, and imagine how hard, I had a children's sermon a couple weeks ago on Mother's Day, and I did a lesson on Hannah, because how hard it was. She wanted to become a mother, she was a mother, and then she gave her child away at about four years old. And so Eli was going to raise him in the tabernacle to be, maybe become a priest, teach him the law, and uh, it said that she would make outfits as he grew and take outfits for him, other clothing, wear as he grew up, but it, imagine how hard it was. Now, God blessed her, and she had five more children after that. So anyhow, Eli raised Samuel in the tabernacle, and he was still a boy. One night he was sleeping, and he heard, Samuel. He got up, and he rushed over, and he said, yeah, what do you want, Eli? He called me. He said, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Well, again, he heard, Samuel. He woke up, and he rushed over and said, yes, here I am. He said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So the third time, he heard Samuel, and he rushed over, and he said, you want me to call you? He said, no, I didn't call you. He said, you know what? I think God's trying to talk to you. Next time you hear your name called, say, here I am, Lord, speak to me. So Samuel went back to bed, and the fourth time he heard Samuel, and he said, here I am, Lord, speak to me. And God gave him a prophetic message. 
He gave him, I predicted the future, of the big long message that he gave Samuel. And it all came true later, what the message he told. A prophet is someone that God speaks to. Sometimes it's news about the future, maybe it's to tell the people what they should know. Um, but it was like a communicator between God and the people, and he talked to Samuel. Samuel's considered to be the first prophet, although he's not one that we named because God was talking to him. And he also was the last judge. Before Israel had kings, they had judges. And people would come with problems and they would rule over them um, and, and judge them uh, or make decisions for them. And uh, Samuel was the last judge and also considered the first prophet. After he was the last judge, God told Samuel another time, I want you to anoint Saul to become the first king because the people were crying and wanted a king. God didn't want him to have a king because he wanted to be worshipped. They said, we need a king, we need a king. So he said to Samuel, go anoint Saul as the first king. And he lived long enough that he also anointed the second king. Who was the second king of Israel? David, right? Um, so he anointed David as uh, the second king. So uh, God knows your name. There are all, all different names here, but God knows he called out Samuel, and he knows your name too. Not only that, he knows your heart. He knows if you're good or if you're evil. Okay. So God knows us. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, the one thief, he mocked Jesus and said, If you are who you say you are, save yourself from us too. But the other thief said, that this man had done no wrong and we're getting what we deserve. And he said, Jesus, will you remember me when you get to your father? And Jesus knew his heart. And he said, I tell you the truth this day, you will be with me in paradise. So God knows our hearts. We can fool other people thinking that we're all good, and you know, but you can't fool God. God knows us, our names, and he knows, he says he knows how many hairs we have on our head. Now, some of them, are, God's easy to remember how many on their head. These guys have a lot of hairs, but he knows what he's saying is he knows all about you. So, um, let's bow our heads for prayer, and then we go to the for Lord, we thank you for these children that are here today, and we ask you if you will bless them, and bless the ones that also brought them. Help us to follow you, and to have a good heart, and to do your will. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Oh, God, my Father, there is no shadow.